Welcome back to our recap of our Zoom Bible study on the book of Romans. Uh, we meet every Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. And in the information box on this YouTube page is the information. If you want to join us, we'd love to have you. And the information to join us is on there. Today we're at Romans chapter 2, verses 12 through 29. And uh, if you haven't read that, I would just encourage you to hit the pause button right now and read chapter 2, verses 12 through 29. And then uh, when you come back, we'll have some words about it. So go ahead and hit that pause button now. I don't know if you're like me, but when I was reading this, I had to really slow down and I had to pay attention to what Paul was saying. Uh, he likes to use a lot of words before he puts in that period. Uh, his sentences are very, very long, uh, but they're very meaningful. And, I, and there's a lot packed into each sentence, so you have to really slow down and try to absorb it. And remember, as we're talking about the last couple of sessions, is that Paul's talking to really two different types of people. But by saying that, he's really talking about everybody. Uh, he's talking about the Jews who are following the Mosaic law, and also they are circumcised, the covenant that God made with Abraham. And so they feel like their salvation is through that. Uh, the unbelievers in the Gentiles that don't know really anything about Christ, um, Paul has already said that what they know about the Creator God, because God revealed himself to them through his creation, but they don't know about Jesus. So they need to be told about the gospel. The, the whole point he's making here is whether you're Jew or whether you're Gentile, you need to accept the gospel message that that's how salvation is. Remember, the gospel message is what God did for us so that we can be in heaven with him. So we're separated from God because of sin, but God loved us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. He, was, he came back to life. He was raised on that third day. He went to be with the Father, and He's coming back for us one day soon. So those, that's the gospel message. He paid the price for us for our sins, uh, that we can be in a, a right relationship with God. And so everyone needs to hear that gospel message. Everyone needs to understand that, and everyone needs to accept that. So that's what Paul's getting at here in Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2. But here at verse 17 of chapter 2, Paul hits the Jewish people really hard. Uh, he tells them that they're not saved just by their nationality. If they can trace their nationality back to Abraham, they felt comfortable in, in the fact that, that that's what saved them. Or they did their best to follow the, the Mosaic laws, which you know they could never keep perfectly anyway. That was a show to prove to people, prove to everyone, um, that we are all sinners and that we're all in need of a savior. In fact, Paul doesn't use this word here, but it's used throughout the New Testament. He calls, especially the religious leaders of the day, hypocrites, uh, because they would teach one thing to everybody else, but they would not follow it themselves. And so we need to be careful in our own relationship with God. Uh, we call ourselves Christians, and we need to make sure that we're not hypocrites as well. You know, we're told in the New Testament to shine the light of Christ on the world. That That's who we are supposed to be as a, a light. And so I sometimes wonder though, when we share that light, um, when people see the light, and they see what's being shown on them, are we attractive? Well, I don't mean we. I mean, is Christ attractive? And let me put it this way. So when we shine the light on them, do they see Christians as judgmental and condemning? Or when Christians shine the light on them, do they see us as loving and as full of grace and full of mercy? And we allow God to do his work on them. I think that's what we need to do when we shine the light on the world. And Paul goes on here to say in verse 24, he says, For it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Again, I kind of wonder that if we're shining that light and we're being judgmental or we're being condemning, um, and not only that, when we're calling ourselves Christians, when we take on the name of Christ, and yet we live in an unchristian way, people are watching us. And are they looking differently at God than they should because of our example. To me, that's profaning the name of Christ. That's, that's blasphemy to God, is that when we claim to be Christians, but we live in an unchristian way, uh, we are profaning the name, and, and we need to be very careful of that. So Paul then finishes up this chapter again with the Jewish people talking about circumcision, because many Jews felt not only by following the law, but by being, but by being circumcised, uh, that was proof that they are part of the covenant that God made with Abraham, and that's their salvation. But what Paul's saying here is that circumcision only really counts is if you're if you are circumcised within your heart. 
Now what I'm getting at is for us, the best example to understand this is through baptism. And in other passages, Paul does parallel baptism with cir- circumcision. Uh, but what Paul's trying to say here is in our in our way of thinking is that, you know, if we just go to the baptistry and we're dunked under water and we come back up, that doesn't save us anymore if we go to a swimming pool or we go to the ocean and swim, right? We're just being dunked under water. But if we hear the gospel message, if we accept the gospel message, if we if we repent, uh, we confess that we know who Jesus is, if we repent, meaning we stop living our lives for ourselves and we begin to live our lives the way Jesus teaches us to live, we're a disciple of Jesus from now on, then we are baptized for as an outward showing of everything that happened on the inside, then that is the act, that is the process uh, that we would call our salvation. And I just want to say this, is that I praise God that he invited me into that relationship. And I'm sure that you praise God for that same thing as well. And, and Paul's trying to make an important, important point here, is that everyone, everyone needs to go through that process and accept that gospel message. So maybe today what we should do is, as we close out this chapter, is just reflect on a couple thoughts. Uh, maybe when I get done saying this, just uh, you know, stop the recording and, and think about it and, and maybe you know, reflect on your own life. First of all, like, is there anything in your life that might cause people to reject God? In other words, is there anything in your life that you're being a hypocrite about? Uh, you call yourself a Christian, but do you live a Christian life? Uh, that's something we need to think about. People are watching us. And are we profaning God's name uh, sometimes by the way that we live our lives? Also think about this. Uh, We understand that Jesus suffered and died so that our sins could be forgiven and that we can have the gift of eternal life. So does this fact that we understand this bring us to praise and to love of Christ and to change the way we do things? You know, Christ paid a heavy price for us uh, on the cross to pay for our sins. He paid it all. All we have to do is accept that. Do we give him praise and do we love him more and more as we meditate on that, realizing what he did for us? Think about those things. And in the meantime, I want to thank you for joining us. I look forward to joining with you next Tuesday um, as we go into Romans chapter 3. So have a great weekend and hopefully I can see some of you on Sunday morning here at BACC. Have a good weekend. God bless you.